Hello everybody, my name's Jack from Peach Guitars and today we're going to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to offer you the Peach Guitars top 10 Les Paul riffs of all time. Let's dig in. Alright folks, welcome to the Peach Guitars channel here. We're going to have a little bit of fun today and like I say, offer you up something a bit different that we haven't done before. We are all sitting around thinking recently about how great the recent selection of Les Pauls that we've received from Gibson's Custom Shop were. And you may have seen on our channel before several different Murphy Lab uh, series videos, unboxings, loads of different stuff from Gibson Custom. And it really just hit home just how iconic this guitar design is. So to celebrate that fact, we're going to dig back on the archive of Les Paul riffs and celebrate the 60 plus years of great music that these instruments have churned out while whittling it down just to 10 of the great rock and roll Les Paul riffs. As you can imagine, this was a pretty mammoth task and basically none of us here at Peach Guitars could agree. So there will be several honorable mentions that you'll see later on in the video. So without further ado, these are the top 10 Les Paul riffs. <laughs> So here's a great riff from one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time. Starting out in the early 90s, this is a riff that reintroduced guitar players of a new generation to the classic Les Paul rock sound that perhaps hadn't experienced it ever before. And I happen to think this is one of the greatest tests of any Les Paul. If you play it with the right kind of tone, it's got a fair bit of overdrive to it, but that mid-range signature snarl of a Les Paul really cuts through if you're playing a good Les Paul. <laughs> So here's another riff from the late great Gary Moore and this is one that a lot of guitar players strive to achieve the tone of. This is the Still Got the Blues track from the late 80s Gary Moore period. A little bit higher gain, really gobs and gobs of sustain. Great Les Paul tone, all about that neck pickup. And really you've got to work hard to achieve the sustain but it'll pay off when you do. <laughs> Now, despite this riff being 18 years old already, it's by far and away the most up-to-date riff on this list. The great darkness hailing from the early noughties brought back the classic rock and roll Les Paul sound in great style. It was hard to pick from the multitude of great riffs just from their first album alone, but this track definitely lives up to the title of, I would say, best guitar riff of the early noughties, maybe even of the whole noughties. You decide. <laughs> Okay, so here's a fantastic Paul Kossoff riff. Paul Kossoff, of course, from the band Free. This is one of the most iconic Les Paul riffs ever. Particularly difficult to play as one guitar player because on the record it's two guitars playing slightly different parts. But it really shows that if you can play it in tune, the complexity of a Les Paul's harmonic range by playing at least five strings at once for one massive chord, it really pays off, gives you a huge tone, and you don't really need a whole lot of distortion to sound massive with a riff like this. <laughs>
Okay, so this next riff is not necessarily one that people would associate straight away with the classic strident Les Paul sound, but nonetheless, it was still recorded on a Gibson Les Paul back in 1985 from the Dire Straits album Brothers in Arms. It utilizes a very unique cocked wah sound, which gives that really nice mid-range snarl. It's a very unique tone, and it's one of the most unique sounding riffs, and also, incidentally, one of the hardest to play on this list. <laughs> Okay, so we've got this Thin Lizzy classic from the mid-70s. This gave birth to the twin guitar harmony thing that a lot of bands took and ran with for the rest of the 70s and 80s, though they were really one of the first to pioneer it, and it's still never really been matched in many people's opinion. And I think this is also one of the most significant riffs that a lot of guitar players learn the concept of harmony from. <laughs> So here's a great riff from the great Billy Gibbons, which has been popularized more recently by other guitar players doing this track, like Joe Bonamassa, but I think the original really shows off that great snarling tone that the early ZZ Top records have. It's Pearly Gates in full flow, and it's one of the most iconic riffs on this list. <laughs> So here's a classic riff from the great Randy Rhodes. It was very hard actually to pick just one of his riffs, but this one does stand out as being one of the most iconic Les Paul riffs of all time. It's one that a lot of guitar players gravitate to when they first explore some high gain distorted tones with a rock and roll solid Gibson tone as well. It's just a great fun riff to play, and I think it really shows off the melodic side of Randy's great playing. <laughs> So here's a riff that I felt particularly awkward playing here in a guitar shop, but nonetheless, it had to be done. It's more than earned its place here on the top 10 Les Paul riffs of all time. Actually, plain and simple, it's one of the greatest guitar riffs on any instrument of all time. Interestingly enough, this is one of the only riffs on this list to be using the Les Paul's neck pickup, a tone that Slash really used to his advantage. He's got one of the most vocal and expressive tones ever on a Les Paul, particularly based around this great neck pickup. And it's a great test of a Les Paul if it can deliver this riff clearly with great articulation. <laughs> Now, before we get to number one on this list, it's time for some considerable honorable mentions. This list was very difficult to pull together, and all of these riffs that you're gonna hear now, honorably mentioned, were worthy of the top 10 spot, but missed out by just a whisker. So here are the honorable mentions. So this selection from the late, great Peter Green shows off not only what a great melodic guitar player he was, but also just how touch sensitive and dynamic a good Les Paul can be by using the neck pickup with a nice clean amp setting and tons of reverb. It's one of those really great riffs that shows off a lot of harmonic kind of complexity, and it shows that a Les Paul is capable of a lot more than just screaming rock tones. So 
here's another great example of Jimmy Page showing that he was truly the king of the single note Les Paul riff. This riff has a great percussive nature to it. It's really clear with every single note. There's not a great use of full sounding chords in it. And yet when they do come in, it really cements with those single note lines to just make one of the coolest riffs of all time. <laughs> So here's a riff from the late 1970s when Les Pauls decided to get a little bit meaner in the hands of Steve Jones of the Sex Pistols. This is a classic riff, great fun to play. It's surprisingly difficult actually to get every note ringing out clearly, but if you pull it off, it's just got buckets and buckets of punk swagger. <laughs> Now here's a great riff born sheerly out of necessity of trying to come up with a very interesting horn part for a record. This was Keith Richards laying down the riff for satisfaction. I think inadvertently, I don't think he ever intended it to be on the record and yet it became one of the most iconic riffs of all time, played of course on a classic Les Paul. <laughs> So here's another fantastic riff penned by the late great David Bowie from his 1974 album Diamond Dogs that he apparently wrote purely to upset Mick Jagger. What's more rock and roll than that? <laughs> It's time for the number one greatest Les Paul riff of all time. I think there was no question about this. When we decided to put this list together, in fact, all of us here at Peach Guitars agreed wholeheartedly this was it. It's Jimmy Page with Whole Lot Love. So in my opinion, this is truly the number one riff that really cemented Led Zeppelin's meteoric rise to stardom from the late 60s into the 70s. It carried across all of the elements that made them great from the classic bluesy rock elements of their earliest days, moving forward to slightly more progressive natures as they moved into the 70s. The recorded version's got loads of great, uh, really clever production effects that Jimmy Page had a, a heavy hand in, but the solid guitar riff really makes this track what it is. I also think it's probably the best Les Paul solo of all time, but for today, it tops this list as the number one Les Paul riff of all time. <laughs> Folks, that is the Peach Guitars top 10 Les Paul riffs ever, but I would like to know down in the comments below whether you agree with the top 10 list. Did you think we missed something? Let us know in the comments what your personal favorite Les Paul riffs are. I think we've covered a lot of ground here though. We tried to cover everything pretty much, not going all the way back, but certainly 60s, 70s and 80s and onwards with classic Les Paul riffs. There's a lot of great tunes to be had here. If you'd like any more information about any of the Les Pauls that you've seen and heard me playing in this video here today, then click the link in the description box down below and head to our website, peachguitars.com to check out not only these guitars, but the full range of Gibson products that we carry. So thank you as always for watching folks. Be sure to leave a like down below. If you've enjoyed this video, comment below with your thoughts as well. Once again, let me know what you thought of the top 10 and if you thought anything was missing. Make sure you're subscribed here to the Peach Guitars YouTube channel as well, so you don't miss out on any of the cool content that we put out in the future. So thanks as always for watching, take good care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.